And now we continue to listen to Conrad's story, Part Two, His Father. When did your father start his art? His first uh, medium was photography. Okay. And that started right away at the Bauhaus, 15, 16. Okay. Uh, uh, And he took some of his most famous pictures before he was 18. working with, as I've told you, glass plate negatives. Around Dessau. Around Dessau. Uh, and most primarily around the Bauhaus campus. Uh, Outdoor shots. Indoor shots, too. Indoor shots, too. Uh, he was all over that building. Um, and of the people, you know, they, they hung off those buildings like monkeys, those little balconies in the residence <laughs> hall. Uh, back then, uh, they, they spent half their time on the roof, uh, where there were these nice benches on the perimeter. Right. The first time I went to the Bauhaus, they asked me what I wanted to see. And I said, oh, I want to see the roof. I want to go up top. And they went, oh, my God. Uh, we can't. Uh, the, the, the roof leaks, uh, the insurance, the this, the that. I said, I want to see the roof. Yeah. Almost every employee in the building came with us up to the roof because they'd never been allowed to go up there. Fantastic. Uh, but... In the day, they had dance classes there, take pictures. Uh, a lot of his pictures were of his fellow bandmate members. He was in the Bauhaus jazz band. Were the university buildings, I mean, the way I picture it today, mm-hmm. did it sort of look like that? Uh, except that there was no housing so close to it. It was like it was in a field. Okay. Um, and down the street on the left are the Meister houses. That location has always been... Yes, that's there. where they were. Okay. Uh, uh, but I only found out later that, that uh, Gropius House... Well, I knew Gropius House had been destroyed, mm-hmm. but uh, the Feinier House is actually a rebuild to the Allies. So uh, they both bombed the it. World bombed II. it, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I have met the guy that was living in the house when it happened. Uh, he was a kid... Uh, it had been turned into housing for high-level Junkers employees, and his father worked for Junkers, and he was in the basement when the bombs came. Is that why they bombed it? Uh, no, I think it was a mistake. I mean, they would have known uh, the Bauhaus. Yeah, I don't think they were trying to kill individuals. I think that they missed. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Junkers housing were, were the sort of modernish buildings on the way over to the corn house if you know that part of town. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so maybe they were aiming at that. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, they, they flattened. Yeah, I was in the Rat House yesterday uh, and saw a historical exhibit of photos. And the stuff that they flattened over there was not of military value either. You know, the, the castle and, and, and the Rat House itself and that whole... Are your father's photos also on display here in Dessau? Uh, there are some in the Bauhaus Museum permanent exhibit in the basement. Uh, there are a lot more coming. Um, uh, and they have more than they show. Okay. Uh, but he is, he is becoming uh, famous around the world for his photos, more so than he would have liked. Uh, How so? He considered himself a painter, okay, just like his father, okay. Uh, but he couldn't stand the idea of the uh, either getting a leg up because he was the son of Feininger, or being judged because he was the son of Feininger. So he signed his paintings T Lux F, no Feininger, uh, and never sought to become a famous man. He, he never sought gallery representation. He was an educator. He taught. Uh, first at Sarah Lawrence in New York, then at Harvard, and finally at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Uh, Does he go to university in Germany? No. He never had more than uh, some teaching courses on the GI Bill at NYU. Uh, His formal education ended in the seventh grade, Okay. and yet he was the smartest man I'll ever have known. He could read five languages. Uh, uh, English, German, Latin, French, uh, Italian, uh, and he could get by in Swedish. Wow. Yeah. Genius. Uh, 
and uh, you know, I, I never hold a candle to him. <laughs> you know, maybe I did 400 plays, but it's nothing compared to him. So, when your father goes home, living in Greenwich Village, hmm. he's still, is he also painting at this time? Uh, yes, he was, he was by that time a painter, uh, but he uh, enlisted early uh, in the Army, uh, so he spent from 42 to 45 uh, It's so Army. funny that he was here in Germany and he saw all of this brewing because Hitler takes power in 33 basically yeah, right pretty much and then I don't know that much about World War II I don't know when territory starts to be occupied uh, 39 that's when they invade Poland okay so but, so your father does he is he he's drafted right no he enlists Okay. Uh, he was too old to be drafted. He was 30, uh, 33 or why did he? Why did he do that? Uh, I, I think that he... To fight the Nazis? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did he feel it like a... Do you think since... I mean, dude, he was here year, just years before that. Did he feel like... Was there an obligation? That I can't answer. Okay. Uh, and that's because my mother was so violently anti-war that he wasn't allowed to talk about it. Um but as, as I said to you the other day, uh, the stupidity of, of the Americans was complete and total. I grew up thinking that he must have been questioning German prisoners of war uh, in a little camp in Maryland uh, called Penmar on the Pennsylvania-Maryland line. Uh, but after his death, I find the stuff that he was supposed to have destroyed, which was his war work, and his war work was drawing pictures of Japanese military equipment and preparing to be part of the invasion force of Japan that we were saved from by the nuclear bomb. I mean, he was commissioned to draw Japanese... Yeah. Uh, op- like, what kind of like objects? Guns, uh, planes, uh, for, for visual recognition. I don't know why he made them, because I only found them after he died. So uh, he sat in an office somewhere? Yeah, in this And they this gave camp. him pictures of something, and he drew them? And he drew interpretations or put them in, collated them into a single page. Uh, I don't know. So just referencing uh, like war machines. Yeah. Or but, different but types. Worse of than that, Japanese war machines. Right. When he could have been, you know, with his language skills and so on. Um, but it wasn't only the Nazis. Uh, the Bauhaus, uh, from the very beginning, had uh, struggles between capitalists and communists. Uh and then communists versus Nazis. Uh, it was never a calm political time. Uh, and it was never really a peaceful time. Mm-hmm. It looks insulated and happy in, in the photos, but there was always something going on. Okay. How many years was he in the service? From 42 to 45. Uh, he was still in the service when they dropped the bomb. And then he was let out after that when they weren't going to have to invade Japan the way they thought they were. Would he come home every night, or was he stationed somewhere? No, he was stationed in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, on the Pennsylvania-Maryland line, Okay. in a camp that no longer exists. Uh, but he would, he, yeah, he'd go home on leave. Uh, that's how he met his first wife. Uh, okay. She was the sister of uh, a brother soldier. Uh, and so uh, they married in, in, I think... 43 or 44 while Mm -hmm. he was in the service and Mm -hmm. she would go and visit him. Did he continue to paint in the evenings after he he drew? He drew during those war years. Right. He didn't have the equipment to paint. Okay. Uh, Do you have any of those works? Oh, sure. Uh, I've put them on long time loan to the Bauhaus. There are 85 in my personal collection. Okay. Okay. which run from 33 till 2007. And it's just Japanese. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, these would be the paintings he was interested in making. Uh, the, the, the war stuff would uh-huh. have one or two moldy samples. He hid them in the basement under the firewood okay. uh, because he promised my mother he would destroy them. Are those in the military archive somewhere? No, prob- well, probably, but I've never pursued it. Uh, we had other... 
things to do. Mm -hmm. And it was a little embarrassing because he had promised to destroy these things and he didn't do it. Okay. Uh, so they weren't supposed to exist. Okay. Um, just within the family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and he was, he was a, real a slap at my mother. He was a civil servant. He was doing his duty, right? Of course, of course. But uh, but you said your mother was anti-war. Totally. Uh, she thought Saddam Hussein was a victim. So why they stayed married? She, my, she my did mother that. and uh, yeah, she yeah. she died tragically early. She was sixteen years younger than him and died eleven years before he did. Okay. Uh, uh, cancer. Okay. But. Uh, uh, this was selfishly my great good luck uh, because I got to be with my father without the filter of my mother for 10 years and we became real friends during that time. Okay, so let's... Can we talk about that? Yeah. Okay. So yesterday you mentioned in our conversation that your grandfather's relationship with his father... Was rocky, yes. Was rocky. Yes. Okay. Do you think that influenced your grandfather's relationship with your father? Yeah, I think it did. Um, I told you yesterday that, that my father has said of his father that he was happiest when he had his family gathered around him on the other side of a locked door. Right. Uh, he loved his family, but he was apart from his family quite a bit. Uh, but Feininger's are somewhat cold people uh, somewhere in their genes. Uh, when my father's first wife got sick with stomach cancer in 49, uh, doctors were still paternalistic enough that they could give an instruction and expect it to be followed. And he told my father to lie uh, to his wife that she was getting better all the time, even though she wasn't. Mm -hmm. But in this horrible year plus that this was going on, uh, his brother and his wife lived not four blocks away from him and not six blocks away were his father and his mother. And nobody ever came to visit. Because they didn't know about it. Or they didn't like being around sick people. Okay. Uh, it was heartless. Uh, and he could have used the support. And he was bitter about that. Okay, uh, so they must have known. Oh, yeah, they knew. Okay. They knew. They just didn't come they around. They did nothing. Uh, that's really that's really weird. Yeah, but that's that's partly what it is to be a finer. You know, I have empathy for other people up to a certain point, and then I have to force myself and say I'm going to be different than the rest. Uh, yeah, but for family members? Yeah. Same way? Uh, I didn't find out about this first wife until I was in my 20s. That's right. Uh, and that was completely by accident, and it caused a huge rift between my father and my mother. Uh, because so she, he talked about his first wife too much early in their marriage. This okay. is my understanding. Okay. And Pat couldn't stand it, my mother. She, they had only met, they had only been together for like four or five years, and she died of cancer. Yeah, but it was apparently blissfully happy. I mean, he was already 35 when he uh, met her. He'd almost missed the boat. And he was so devoted to my mother because he really had missed the boat by that time. And so when he has his first kid in 57, when he is 47, uh, and his last kid when he's almost 60, he's given a second chance at life. Okay. Uh, but uh, my grandmother, Lionel's wife, hated my mother. Because? But in photos you can tell that she was thick as thieves with the first wife. I think it was an idyllic, happy time. Uh, these couple of years between... Then why wouldn't she come and visit her on her deathbed? Uh, because they were scared of sick people. Uh, so really like disease? You, like, can, you can hang it on disease, but I call it a, a family heartlessness. Okay. Uh, oh, well, maybe I'll go next week. Uh, next week it turns into the month after that, or maybe never. Um, How long before his first wife died that he met your mother? Uh, he was alone from 49 till uh, 54 he met her. 
Okay. Met my mother. Um, and as I say, she was 16 years younger. She was a, a grad student, and he was a teacher, never of her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they met uh, through a mutual friend. So, okay, I don't want to make that huge jump without letting the audience know. When he is, when he retires from the military mm. in 45, Five. where does he go from there? He uh, comes back to New York, and he studies under the GI Bill, excuse me, working to get his, his papers to be an educator. Okay. And then he starts teaching at the all-women's college, Sarah Lawrence in Bronxville, New York, outside of New York City. Okay. And he's teaching? He's teaching art. Perfect. Is he happy? Uh, this was an awful time for him okay. uh, because of, of this, the death. this death. And he, he wasn't painting. He was... Uh, he swore he was never going to paint again. Um, so I, I can't say that he was happy, okay. but he was living. Um, and uh, then he came to Cambridge, which is an idyllic place to be, uh, and starts teaching at Harvard, another idyllic place to be. So from the girls' college... He goes to Harvard. How does he swing that? Uh, friends. Friends. Uh, Gropius ends up there but he wasn't really there yet Um, other intellectual friends with with lots of money Uh, his father is still alive at this point oh yeah and his father is perhaps helpful Uh, and my grandmother more so the reason that, that all these photographs and all their letters are at Harvard is because she was trying to bribe them into giving my father tenure. Didn't work. Mm. Uh, Harvard does what it wants to do. Um, okay. his, so she was writing. Uh, well, she she spent the last pretty much all of her time in New York. Uh, once they came here, editing their correspondence uh, with an eye towards publication. Okay. Um, There was another book that came out this year, uh, uh, Letters Between the Two of Them. Uh, but it's a fraud because she put an embargo on her own letters. So it's really only Lionel. Uh, <laughs> wow. Interesting. <laughs> and I don't know the reason for that. Uh, it, it was a two-sided correspondence. Um, Maybe she wants to protect her privacy. Or she wants to focus only on him. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but there's there's an actress in Berlin who is uh, doing staged readings. In fact, she put this book together. This was correspondence. Okay. But it isn't really correspondence. It's a, a monologue. Just his letters. Lionel, uh, yeah. With some written interspersions. Uh, which is not to say it's not interesting. It is. It's, yeah. I saw it in Berlin. It's good. Okay. Um, Are people asking you for your consultation when they do projects like that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you and disapprove of something, would that matter? I've only disapproved once. Okay. Uh, I have nothing to do with Lionel. There is, there is a, a, I don't know what you call it. Uh, uh, a foundation? Well, no, it's a, it's a business uh, that supervises uh, the rights and the publication and, and how things go. For instance, this book of correspondence... Uh, wanted to use a detail of a watercolor, you know, one boat out of the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this went right down to the wire. They had to finally agree to put a postcard of the entire piece inside the book before they could sell the book. And it had already gone to press. Um, I control the copyrights to my father's photographs. Uh, and I've only denied permission once. Okay. Uh, and once I say no, it's no. But I've said yes four or five hundred times. Okay. Uh, sort of once a week, somebody wants to use a photo in a book. Um, and they have to get your written authorization, your, your, your verbal permission to yes. do that. Yes, okay. I, I send them an email that says, you know, it's a stock thing. I push a button and it goes. Okay. Uh, and I don't charge either. I want him more famous in the world. And my goal now is to make my father famous 
through the materials that I've brought with me to Germany, uh, and I will see what I can do. Okay. Uh, because I put his last name back on him, even <laughs> if he didn't want it. Uh, and uh, he deserves to be much better known than he is. Okay. Once people see his stuff, they lose their minds. Uh, you can you can tell people because it, I'm posting them. Uh, they should go on Insta to T Lux Feininger and see what they see. I, I post one for painting a week, okay. and I've been doing it now for 30 weeks. When he went to Harvard to start teaching, did he live out the rest of his life in Cambridge? Yes. Yes, pretty much. Okay. Uh, How old is he when he goes to Harvard? Uh, he's 43, 44, somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, but so, he's only at Harvard for six or seven years, and then they dump him. Uh, and he goes to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, where he teaches until he retires in 76. Okay, so he Boston is like his hometown. Cambridge is his hometown. Cambridge is uh, the hometown. Okay. People who are from Cambridge are from Cambridge. Uh, it, how many kilometers from downtown Boston is Cambridge? Six, ten, ten minutes? <laughs> 6.5. He used to ride his bike. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've only I visited the campus one time, you know, just because everybody sure goes to Harvard. Yeah. Everybody goes to Boston wants to see Harvard campus, right? Yeah. Um, 